Hello, dear brothers and sisters. As we spoke last time about the authors and the Gospels themselves, today we'll talk about the text. We will go into Mark's Gospel. Mark, as I said last time, is the shortest Gospel. It has only 16 chapters. Mark was not a disciple of Christ. He was a follower of Apostle Peter, and he was his translator, and Peter called him his son. And so after a period of time when Mark followed Peter and Peter was getting old, Mark was asked by the community to write down everything that he had heard from Peter to teach about Jesus. Very short, very comprehensive form to present it to the Roman audience of the New Testament or of the, of the particular gospel of the story of Jesus Christ. And therefore he begins as I said, uh, with the declaration of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the beginning of the kingdom of God, for which reason, in a symbolism, Mark is put under the symbol and mark of a lion that he's declaring from the very beginning, from the very start of his gospel, the kingdom of God. So we will go line by line through Mark's gospel, very slowly so that you can digest this and you can accordingly transform your lives uh, to live as if you were present at the time of Mark following Peter or the time of Jesus uh, leading his disciples including Peter calling them to follow him. So let us concentrate on the story of the New Testament and imagine ourselves present with them, living with them and therefore as we go along with the biblical story of the New Testament, particularly uh, in this case the story of Mark, let us transform our lives because we would have missed the point of studying the Bible if our lives did not transform if we did not get closer and closer to Christ every time we met through this screen and we did not uh, change our minds and our hearts, which we will talk about in the future episodes. So let's today begin with Mark's Gospel. And I will read line by line and we will go over it. So Mark begins as this. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets. So, here we have the beginning of the gospel. What is a gospel? In the original language, the word gospel is evangelion. So, it is the beginning of the evangelion of Jesus Christ. Evangelion in Greek means the good news. So it is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. What is the good news? Let's talk about that. The good news is the fact that humanity is finally is given the opportunity to return to God. Because the bad news was given in the Old Testament in the Garden of Eden, when humanity separated itself from the life-giving God. And here the life-giving God has returned to humanity to bring it back to life. In the Garden of Eden, in the Genesis story, we see that God gives them the terrible news that you will die. In the New Testament, Jesus comes and says, I am the life and the resurrection. So life being eternal life, we choosing Jesus, following him, we get closer to the source of life and we inherit the eternal life. But being the resurrection is also important because the bad news was about death, that humanity will die. And being dead, we needed the resurrection so that we will be 
reborn into this eternal life, to continue to live our lives within God, with God and God with us. So the Evangelion, the good news, is about this reality that humanity has separated itself from God, therefore has fallen into the trap of death. Now the good news is that God has reached out to humanity to rescue from death through resurrection into eternal life. And therefore, I would like to a little bit pause here and talk to you about the life of humanity and the process of finding the way back to God. As we know, there are many, many religions in the world. And all the religions are trying to find the way to the eternal life. Go into every single religion and you will find that the main problem is death and suffering. Suffering and death are the cause for starting and beginning a religion. And it is the goal of each religion to come out of that cycle of death and suffering and to find eternity, find that thing that is in our mind, that our intelligent di intelligence dictates us that it is the true reality and that we live outside of that reality. So humanity from the very beginning, starting from Adam and Eve, after they were cast out of the Garden of Eden, has kept the memory of the true life, the eternal life, that they were partakers and uh, lived within that eternal life in the Garden of Eden. And that was only possible through relationship with God because God had created them and had kept them close to Himself so that they will live and grow into their maturity into the eternal life. However, humans being created in uh, the image of God, they were created free. Therefore, they had a choice to either remain with God or to, to choose the knowledge and choose the knowledge of God and, and eat the fruit that was forbidden and fall out of the relationship with God. So it's like when we have a relationship with someone, we either can maintain our authentic relationship with that person and come to know them through that relationship by love and care, or we can go and investigate that person. When we start investigating someone's life, we are ultimately putting our relationship in jeopardy and we are putting that person in the category of enemies. If we continue to have relationship, that person naturally and authentically opens up to us and gives us all the beauty of their personhood in a natural way and that creates a loving relationship with the person. But humanity, with the help of the evil, went the other way and found a shortcut to investigate God, to know God and become like Him, to have power over God, to put themselves parallel to God rather than within the same circle with God in relationship. But humanity chose to go on a parallel line. And when we are on a parallel line with God, we are separated from God, then death comes naturally because the source of life is God Himself and outside of life is death. And so the good news was about the fact that all this effort that humanity has put to find God, to find their way back to the eternal life, now is present here. And we find that in the first chapter of Matthew, when the angel appears to Joseph and tells him that this little boy born from Mary is from God. 
that God himself has incarnated into humanity and that he will be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Until that point, we were without God. God was a distant God up in the universe, outside of the universe, wherever we can imagine. But there was a distance between us and God. There was a, a beast, separation between us and God. The beautiful imagery to imagine this is the story of poor Lazarus, where poor Lazarus dies and the rich man dies, and they are in two different parts. One, the poor Lazarus, by natural uh, causes, ends up with Abraham. And Abraham is this chosen patriarch who represents the relationship with God, who hosted God in his house, who was the first one to establish that broken link uh, or, or to reconnect that broken link with God. And so Lazarus is with Abraham, with the chosen person, and the rich man is in a very hot place where he's thirsting. And the thirst is most often is presented as a form of desire for God. The thirst is thirst for water. And Christ compares himself to water many times, that he is the living water, that when we drink from that water, we will never thirst again. And this rich man is presented in the story as uh, very thirsty, desiring God and not being able to quench that desire. However, the Lazarus, poor Lazarus, is with Abraham. So the humanity for the longest time was like that, like that rich man who is in a thirsty state of mind, in a relationship that is separated from God, that in a process of their moving themselves to the parallel reality from God, they had fallen out of the eternal life. And therefore, they had tried to reestablish the relationship with God through creating many religions, pagan religions. But there is also that invisible force present with humanity who has fallen from God in the result of pride that is hateful towards humanity because humans are in the image of God. And humans no matter how far they are from God, they always can feel that, that image in the depth of their being and they want to find the source of that image. You have a picture of your father whom you have never met and you have that picture on your desk and even if you have only seen it once and you have put it away, you always desire to match that image to the person after whom that image was taken. And the desire of humanity always troubles the evil one. So in that way, the evil one uh, leads humanity in a stray way, creating all these other religions, all the pagan religions that in a sense are the result of the authentic urge of humanity to connect with God, but they connect to something else. Humans create gods in their imagination and they put them on top of mountains, even in the heaven or under the sea or in places that they cannot reach, but it's close enough that they can relate to it. And all humanity goes astray in that search for God. And only when God reaches out to humanity and chooses Abraham and presents itself to Abraham and starts this relationship is that humanity receives the hope of salvation. And the good news is the authentication of that hope, that the hope is here. All this that we have desired throughout centuries now is becoming reality now is becoming fulfilled. And that's why Mark ends this line 
as it is written in the prophets because the prophets were the one who were giving them the hope who were feeding into that hope and saying that it is going to happen and so mark authenticates here that this jesus that we are talking about is actually the fulfillment of what the prophets have told us and here i would like to speak about the prophets a little bit and we will continue uh, finish today and we'll go on to the next lines next time sometimes when we say prophet in the modern times sometimes we understand as a sorcerer a person who can tell the future a person who can read the zodiacs who can tell us about our life what is going to happen what has happened person who has this uh, vision about the future or can see into the past those are probably touching on the uh, who prophets are but as we know truth and false truth are very close to each other where when even an iota is twisted in the truth it ceases from being a truth and so the evil one has always tried to distract humanity only a small degree from the truth and humanity has ended up in the wrong place at all all times and so in the understanding of the prophet yes the prophets could see the future the prophets could tell people how to live their lives because they may perhaps could see their lives also but that does not uh, conclude what the prophet is the understanding of the prophet in the orthodox way is a person who points out to Christ in the future and that starts from the very beginning through the relationship with God Abraham and others who come after him pointing out to that authentic relationship between humanity and God all the way to John the Baptist who is the last prophet pointing out to Christ and saying I am not the one but I have come to witness about him so prophet is a person who witnesses about God and most importantly and specifically about Christ pointing out to the hope of the salvation of humanity so uh, we'll conclude here and we'll continue next time with the understanding of these two important things good news and the prophets the prophets pointing out to the good news and the good news being the salvation of humanity thank you and i will see you next time